God's perfect love casts out fear. And yet, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Think of a husband who is known to be, let's say, the perfect husband, a righteous husband, a loving husband, one who watches over and protects and supports and loves his wife. Think of a father who watches over his children, a man of the house who watches over his household, a king who looks after his kingdom. Even from within, even as the wife, as the children, as the subjects in the kingdom, even with that perfect king, perfect father, perfect husband, there would be a sense in which you would say that he is a husband, he is a father, he is a king to be feared. And what I mean is, if you're someone who is looking to harm the wife, to harm the marriage, to invade the home, to harm the children, to invade the kingdom, to harm its citizens, it would be wise of you to fear the king, the father, the husband. And it is good for the, the wife, the children, the citizens to know it's comforting to the wife, the children, the citizens to know that their king, their father, their husband is to be feared. Because they know that he is feared because his wife, his children, his kingdom is not to be trifled with. There's also this sense that though God's perfect love casts out fear, fear of him is the beginning of wisdom in that fear of the absence of him. But it, if we fully believe in God, we would be fully grateful for his existence in our life. And if we are fully grateful for his existence and for all that he does and all that he sees us as and the way that he views us, then we would cherish the fact that we are able to abide in him and he abides in us. And so we recognize the utter lack, the absence of his value in our life would be tremendous. And so to fear him in one sense is to recognize his necessity in our life, and therefore, by him being a necessity, a necessity just as necessary as breathing, eating, sleeping, and so on, and as he is capable of, though he chooses not to, he is capable of pulling away and removing himself from our lives. He is, in that sense, to be feared. And knowing that is actually a root of gratitude. That gratitude for the fact that he is a God who, he is the God who, does not forsake or abandon or leave under any circumstance.
when we think of someone who has a lot of power, like a president or a king or even a boss or a father or a husband, there's something about their very position that if we are in relation to one who is righteous, it's a common thing to think it's a good thing that my father, my boss, my king, whoever, is a good father, boss, king, husband. Especially in this world where we can see far too often the impact that a either a bad father, husband, king, and so on can have, or the negative impact that the absence of a good father, husband, king has. Knowing that God is love, we don't have to fear him, that is, we don't have to fear knowing that we are inheritors of his kingdom and all that he has given to reconcile us with him, knowing all of this, we know that we do not have to fear him personally as we know him. But we know that he in his position is of such power and influence that in the wrong hands, it would be devastating. In fact, in our own hands would be devastating. And so to recognize that anyone other than him in his position would be disastrous is to have a degree of fear of his position. Respect for the the very real potential of, of one in his position to simply snuff us out. Myself as an individual or all of mankind. He promised not to send another flood but he could have not promised and then sent another one. Right? We see the evidence that he is fear-worthy in the flood. He's fear-worthy Sodom and Gomorrah. Fear-worthy with the destiny of Satan. We cannot fully appreciate his goodness if we do not properly recognize that he is fear worthy. A child cannot properly, cannot fully recognize the value of their father until they recognize the value that his absence would cause, the, the impact that his downfall would cause, the, the fact that he's a, a protector to be feared from the outside. You see, especially if we are not If I were not a child of God, and I suddenly became aware of him and his power, and I were someone who regularly attacked his children, let's say like Paul before his conversion. It would be utterly foolish of me, knowing that, it would be utterly foolish of me to 
not fear God. If I recognize that I'm his enemy, and I recognize that he has a family, and I recognize that I am willfully going about harming his family, as soon as I am in a position of being aware of all those things, it would be wise of me to fear God. And as a child of God, I can be grateful that my Father in Heaven is utterly fear-worthy, to be feared more than anything else. Sure, my fellow man can do horrible things, as many people are seeing with the recent Jeffrey Dahmer Netflix series. But also we see in terrorist acts and genocidal acts, mankind is to be feared to some extent. That is, or I should say, they have some degree of fear worthiness. Nature has some degree of fear worthiness, as we're seeing with current hurricanes and such. But at the top, of the hierarchy of fear worthiness must be God. He's at the top of gratitude worthiness as well, but he's also at the top of fear worthiness, perhaps each because of the other. He is deserving of our utmost gratitude because of all that he does for us. And then for, for those of us who are outside of his kingdom, outside of his family, he is worthy of utmost fear. He holds the keys to everything. So it's not a contradiction to say fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and also God's perfect love casts out fear.